This is a, a presentation to members of the public invited there. No. So, so, it's a, so it's a meeting open to members of the public? Yes, to attend. Yeah. So it's legally now allowed for people to film it? Um, in terms of certainly the people presenting because it's design development and this is the early stage mm -hmm. they had not expected it to be filmed and what are you going to say that you don't want members of the public to see uh, nothing is how it gets because this is design development rather than final design mm -hmm. that's where they're and this um, so there's nothing which was clearly it's an open public meeting, hmm. but it's the filming of it which was raising concern with with the architects in particular because they want they want to evolve the design as a result of public consultation rather than having someone presented eventually uh, to an audience or something like that. Um, I, I don't understand your concern. This is a meeting held in public and we're legally allowed to film. I will have an idea of it, but I will certainly. Um, I mean, if there's something that the architect wants to say to Cameron afterwards to qualify whatever you're talking about, I'm happy to have that. You're not trying to constrain what you're going on. I've got no intention of it. On one hand, I don't, I don't think there is anything which is, but it was just wanting to make sure that, I mean, the architect wanted to make sure that it was understood this was design development, where it will often be, be adjusted as a result of public consultation and public input, rather than it being presented in any other way. I, I will continue to have a... Would, would he not be making that clear? Um, the members of the public here anyway. I will try to create a nice okay. Thank you. 
of house types. <coughs> so on this project, project, in terms of being designed later, um, we're going to introduce you in a, sec in a second. We've got two architects working on this thing. And, um, we selected two architects because of the scale of 237 homes to add to the interest of, of the architecture and, and really differentiate our products. And, and the two architects we, we selected were Paul Thomas Edwards and Alison Brooks, who we worked successfully with over the years. And um, both practices have won a, a huge amount of awards for their work, and we're very confident we'll deliver the quality that Barton Park deserves. So Paul touched on it, but in terms of Barton Park governance, um, I'll touch on the next couple of slides. It's, it's worth reminding everyone that um, the, the lead developer on the site is the Barton Oxford LOP. They've got the outline planning consent back in October 2013, and then they've achieved reserved matters for um, the primary infrastructure works and the landscape and public road works in February this year. We are the, the first house builder, and we're very we're delighted to be selected as the first house builder on on the ground at Barton Park, and so we'll be delivering the first phase, which has the ability to go up to 237 homes. Okay, go slide. So we're showing here the, the overall outline master plan that was consented in the state back in October 2013. Hopefully everyone can see, but the outline in red there um, basically shows the, the, the scope of the land parcels that we will be developing. And over the coming slides, we'll start to tell you about our emerging proposals. Um, I'd just like to point out that um, we um, exchanged contracts back in December last year, so we're, we're broadly about half the way on the way to um, submission of our reserve matters. So everything you see here isn't fixed in stone. We're very much evolving the design um, week by week, and we're now moving into the period where We've undertaken a number of public consultation events of which this meeting holds part of that strategy. So I'll hand over to Theresa. Good evening. I'm Theresa Water from Follow Thomas Edwards Architects. Um, what you see up on the screen now, and as um, Paul said, um, this phase of Barton is, um, will be a reserve matters application. And so evidently we work within the both the parameter um, plans for the overall site and the design guidelines. And just as a reminder, just um, starting in the top left, um, it's really um, an area showing where the building zones are of our phase. The next one is the density, and you can see the darker colours um, indicate a denser um, scheme, so that we're working within those parameters. Bottom left is land use, effectively um, everything on our site in phase one is residential. The um, sort of brown box is the commercial centre, which you see then that's outside of our site. And then the other map in the um, middle there on the bottom right is about movement and access. And evidently where um, the roads are actually outside our parcel, and so they're being, there's what Paul referred to as the start on site now. So we're working very much within the existing roads and access and network that the overall master plan has developed. And as well as that, and it's very faded, I'm sorry you can't see, but there's a whole series of design codes, development specifications, the Barton Area Action Plan. So all of these form the sort of the planning policy documents that we're working within and developing the scheme there. So, um, our vision, our team's vision, is uh, very much building on the parameters and design code document, but is also attempting to draw on the character and scale of central Oxford's neighbourhoods and the neighbouring communities of North Wayne Barton, Paddington. Um, however, we realise that there's a need for its own architectural identity and it must be clear. It's intended as a very sustainable urban extension for Oxford, and so it is very much a walkable community, a townscape within a landscape. Exemplary architecture and landscape that work with each other to create a very clear sense of place. And all of the homes are designed to respond to their specific location in the master plan. So every condition, whether it's looking to the south over the A40 or north over Bayswater Brook, it's 
really about making places where people feel at home and want to live and connecting to neighboring communities. Okay, as part of delivering that uh, vision for sustained work, urban extension for Oxford, our strategy around sustainability, um, firstly, to, to say that all of the homes are part of Park on the first phase will be de delivered to Code Sustainable Homes Level 4. And the way we go about approaching that from our, from our experience is we really concentrate on the, the building fabric as our first port call um, by introducing high levels of thermal insulation basically to reduce the energy demand on the properties. We supplement that by um, renewable technology. Um, on the scheme, 20% of the energy demands will be met by renewable sources. All of the homes on the scheme will be um, lifetime homes compliant. And a key theme as part of our housing typologies, which we'll move on to, is that they, they will all have you know, generous, uh, dedicated home working spaces, as we see that as a, as a key trend for, for modern housing. High levels of, of daylight and uh, maximising dual aspects on apartments, which again we'll, we'll show you as we move through the, the presentation. And equally, the scheme will be connected into the, the sustainable urban drainage system, which is um, being installed by the LLP along Linear Park. Okay. Can I ask a question? Um, yeah. You talk about the 20% of energy demand from renewable sources. Yeah, sure. Obviously, you're very welcome. Um, have you any idea at this stage what the, um, uh, the increase in carbon emissions from the housing unit or something will be on, on the site or, or not? Um, I, I think we're working through our, our energy strategy at the moment, so I don't think I'll be able to put a figure to that. Um, I mean, where we're broadly at on, on, a, on our skin design is, is around master plan levels, and we've got some early typologies, but we're going to show you some you know, indicative elevations. So we're doing all of our energy modelling that as we speak now at the end of the month, so um, it's probably a tricky question to answer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, but you know, we're, we're exploring a number of um, renewable solutions at the moment as well um, to, to incorporate into the scheme. What does the dedicated home working space actually involve? Um, we've got lots of studies um, basically. Um, you, you've seen our housing typologies with, with Really, as I mean, we see it as a, as a developer a lot now, but a lot more people are working from home. Not all the time, but <coughs> some people work one day a, a week we're from home. Computers and yeah. And dedicated space for them. So you know, with with themes that run through our house types, and um, you know, it's having a, a, a home working space to study, but maybe it's at the ground floor at the front of the property helps activity and overlooking during the daytime. So yeah. Does that mean that if you've got a three bed house, you've also got an extra not always, not always, not always yeah. 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 But certainly some, some of them are, are, are very generous in size, so they have yeah. Um, so moving on to our um, indicative program. So we're working through, as I mentioned right at the beginning, we, we'll be doing two rounds of public consultation. We've got our, our first event coming up this, this Saturday at Clarton Neighbourhood Centre. And next Tuesday night we're, we're at Northway Community Centre where we'll be looking to take the first feedback that we can pull from, from members of the public and then we'll be going back through another round of consultation through June. Our ambition is to submit our reserve mass application um, in July and, and then we will start house building. Basically we, we buy the land when the first phase of the infrastructure is done. So we, we're looking to start on site after, after that has um, completed. So the next few slides really take you through how we've um, developed the master plan from the reference scheme um, on, um, in terms of the outline application. And the first thing we always start with is really sort of what are the constraints and opportunities that the site has to offer. And I'm really sorry that my pointer doesn't seem to work that far. But um, just to locate you, you can see the grey diagonal line is, is the A40. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. And evidently, um, the great thing about the site is to the north, we've got the whole the farm and the green belt land. We've got the linear park to the south of that. And we've got some wonderful existing greenways and pedestrian footpaths that go north, south, through the site. Evidently, the A40 is a challenge. Um, and um, we come in off the A40, as you can see, um, just where that little red C 
symbol is. Um, and I think what this really shows is um, how this Bolton, this, this um, master plan, is such a connecting piece, um, actually linking um, all those areas of Barton with Northway and Hedington. And it's, um, and it's actually just, it looks like it should really be there in terms of finishing off this piece of jigsaw. And it's, and it's really um, up to how we develop the master plan to see how we can make those connections with those places of, of Oxford, but also make this a place in itself with having its own identity. And so what we've done in terms of our phase is we've considered it in what we call five character areas. And um, so evidently we've got the um, homes along the A40, that's number one. There's a primary street that runs through the master plan, and area two is what we, the master plan has identified as a primary square. It's where there is anticipated to be a commercial centre at the heart of the new Barton Park. Um, three is the linear park of the um, accommodation that faces out looking onto the linear park. Four is um, the area around Greenway, one of the existing um, greenways and north-south routes through the site. And then five is a place that we've created within one of our own parcels. And it's just a way of breaking down the whole to look at how each of these areas have a different identity um, by virtue of where they sit on the site and their immediate relationships to neighbouring areas. And so this slide also takes those five character areas and shows some points of reference in terms of um, character and scale. The A40 Primary Street Junction, which is part of the Northway Quarter, we feel um, has a kind of scale of streets that it has to respond to. The A40 is obviously quite broad, and the buildings that are um, facing the A40 have to they benefit from the south orientation, but they also have to deal with the acoustic issues of the A40. So they're designed very carefully to provide variety, um, but with landscape interspersed with built form to create this this very um, a kind of significant edge. The commercial square, which is a landscape space with terraced houses overlooking it, the, the linear park edge, which in itself has different characters, it has crescent, it has detached homes, it has apartments. Um, the Greenway, which is a major north-south um, landscape boulevard with houses lined each side. And then Mews, Courts and Lanes, which are much more intimate in scale, two-story houses primarily. Um, and then uh, the sort of paved surfaces and Mews character, which is slightly more urban. And so this slide is called movement, which is very much a kind of planning term, but I like to just, uh, call this slide making good streets and building on the principles of the street network that we've inherited from the outline master plan. So the red dashed line indicates the primary street, which is already under construction. And this, this creates the opportunity for a crescent, a really significant um, built sort of set piece architecture that takes advantage of that crescent shape. And then a, a series of secondary streets and muses that add uh, a grain and a different relationship to the buildings around them. So it's about making um, streets and buildings that are attuned to each of the character areas and creates a kind of layering of landscape and different kinds of movements such as cycle and walking. So the, um, I'm just going to talk about some specific parts of the site which offer different uh, constraints and opportunities. So the first one is the A40 frontage and the diagram on the bottom left illustrates the, the conditions. It's obviously a major point of access into the site. Um, there will be um, acoustic issues to deal with from traffic, although traffic will be slowed with the new intersection. There will be speed restrictions around the entrance. 
um, cycle pedestrian and bus for um, public access. But there are also great opportunities. And I think it's a really, we as a design team think it's a very interesting challenge. There are very few examples anywhere in the UK of a really successful architectural response to a major suburban arterial road. And so creating that transition between a major road into a quieter residential neighborhood is a real challenge. So yeah, our design kidding. response is to create a, a gateway to the new neighborhood. Um, to deal with noise, to create active frontages at ground level, so um, apartments will have front doors and front gardens. Um, there, there are podium elevated gardens above some of the parking, so parking is concealed in the apartments. The bedrooms are all located away from the A40M, the main living spaces, with dual aspect living rooms. Private amenity space and a kind of variation in the massing of the building along the A40. Could you, could you explain what the suns are, please? <laughs> that's, that's just uh, really showing the orientation so that the, the, you know, the north is general. North. So, <laughs> so the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, so it's just how, where the sun is. That's going to continue then, the movements of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, can I ask you a question? Is that a car or a car? Is it right to ask a question? You were talking about noise nuisance. Sorry, Georgina. Oh, sorry. We'll, we'll take questions later on. Um, Roy, I didn't ask you. I was asking this lady here. Yeah, yeah, but I'm in charge of the meeting. Oh, unfortunately. Do you want to carry on? Okay, yeah, I'm happy to take questions again. of the linear park. This is a fantastic opportunity and it's not the same all the way along. We wanted to make sure that each um, frontage to the linear park responds to its specific place. So each um, element that you see there in the diagram, the sort of black lines indicate the different kinds of frontages. So there are apartments on the west side. There are two blocks framing the crescent. There are um, single family homes which run along towards the east, and these same family homes frame the, the kind of threshold to the park from the green one. So the, um, these, the pedestrian and cycle links are sort of reinforced with our scheme and to provide that kind of public access to the park from, um, from the sort of streets that are providing access to the homes. Yeah. So here's an image looking sort of south east um, across the uh, crescent formed by the primary street and you can see the little kind of um, sort of quarter shaped central news area beyond the primary crescent and then two buildings that frame each side of the landscape and beyond the sort of empty site beyond are the, the outline master plan future things. And then here's a view looking south across Bayswater Brook and the new landscape towards some of the houses overlooking the brook, terrace houses framing each side of the um, greenway and just a general scale and massing that indicates the, the kind of character that we're trying to achieve. <laughs> see um, the A40 um, area, entry access area, which um, Alison described, and also the um, apartments framing the present on the linear park edge, as well as the houses to the east. As well as that, 
North South Greenway, where what we're doing is providing kind of strong frontages, their homes, their houses along the um, east and west edges of that. Um, and then back into our parcel here where we've got the news development, we've got um, what we call Gladstone Gardens, and there's a really there's an opportunity there for an incidental sort of shared amenity space, um, which is um, for I mean residents, it's a public space, residents and, and others alike. So how does all of that work? And so the next few slides are very diagrammatic, and it just really takes you through um, some of the principles. And this indicates the tenure mix. So the um, pinky colour is the private market sale accommodation, and the blue is the affordable accommodation. So you can see we've got a spread across the site and a mix of both houses and flats in both as well. So it's 40% affordable. Yes. The next um, diagram just shows you the story heights. So effectively the lighter the colour the lower the building is, but you can see the, the only the five-story marker building at the A40 entrance, at the only five-story building. Then we go down to the blue, which is four story, and the darker green, which is three and there are some two-storey houses as well. So effectively that's all working within the parameter plan and the um, AOD heights that have been set out by the outline master plan. And then we've got showing the diagram showing the overall <coughs> mix of houses and flats. And as you can see in the colours, it, it, it varies from one and two bed flats, two to five bed houses. Um, the site and effectively the apartments are generally concentrated both um, along the A40 and then in those two buildings um, either side of the Crescent as well as along Primary Street. So um, we're very much at the early stages of the design and we're starting to build a palette of materials or, or research a palette of materials that we think would be appropriate and draw on the various residential traditions that Oxford is um, blessed with. <laughs> um, so the materials are generally brick, which is durable, long-lasting, long long-wearing. We're looking at tones of brick, which one finds in the Oxford context potential for accents such as checkerboard of brick, um, a kind of high quality base or special surrounds to entrances, and then integrating all of this with the pavement and landscape material. And there will be opportunities to accentuate front doors and entrances, covered porches, corner windows, and metal work that, that brings detail and character to each of the houses. I have a vision of the, the homes and we're looking to deliver a, a good range of, 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 of types and sizes of homes. As I mentioned right at the beginning, but there's no off-the-shelf house types here. It's quite an interesting scheme for us to design uh, because there's lots of edges to our parcels that have very different outlooks. Um, key features of our homes we're looking to, to maximise, as I said, around separate study and hobby spaces. Generous space standards, our, our homes Typically, when, when you compare them to, to other house builders, are a little bit bigger, and that's because we pride ourselves on the internal layout and design of them and have good things like good functional storage in the homes. And as you touched on, on, on materials, but we're looking at you know, a familiar palette of materials but expressed in a, in a contemporary manner is, is, is our ambition. And energy efficient, reducing energy uh, consumption and utility bills. So we're just going to take you through um, a kind of snapshot of the very early uh, development that we're um, producing in terms of the architectural form and the planning of the buildings. So these are the two small buildings, four-story apartments that um, have eight flats per block. So these are planned around the central core. They're two-bed flats. The bedrooms, you can see them the plan to the bottom of the slide are facing the north and the living area, which you can see 
expand from from south to north. So we want to gain the solar, you know, the benefit of solar gain and sunlight on the south side of the blocks into the main living spaces, but allow windows to be opened and people to have amenity space away from the noisy A40. So they're you know very nice dual aspect flats with lots of storage and only two flats per core. So they're I mean ideally they'd be walk-ups and the front porch and entrances are articulated with, with covered um, porches. Next slide. Yeah, this is um, very similar. This is on the um, west side of the A40, but it follows the same principles. The narrative is exactly the same in the sense that all the bedrooms, none of the bedrooms are on the A40 elevation. And the living room is actually a through living room because, again, it's that challenge you know, we have the south sun and the southern aspect to the, to the south on the A40 side. But we have also the issue of the, um, the noise conditions. So we've got through living rooms and then um, there are the service rooms like kitchens and bathrooms on that frontage. And so this is the marker building at the entrance to the site from the A40. And this is a, a quite a special block because it has um, the largest number of apartments and obviously the largest number of cars. So there's a, a podium that uh, conceals the parking. So the plan in the top left hand corner, you can see the, the parking at ground floor level, but all around the perimeter of the parking are flats, some with direct access, their own front doors or the communal entrance to the apartments. And it's a mix of a, of a large apartment block, a small one, and then two houses. And all um, residents will have access to the podium gardens, which you can see the plan on so the right. So the podium is the first floor? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And all of the bedrooms in, in these plots are also designed to be facing east or west, not um, onto the age for so, um, so how many flats are there in the, for example, left hand block there? But um, this is quite um, an interesting location in the site. And it's, um, it's, you can see the little um, key drawing just to the right at the top of the drawing. And it's the Crescent. And it's where we have our first houses as you come in from the A40. But actually, they're on a primary street. So they're on quite a main road. They get the wonderful outlook of the linear park, but they are north facing. So quite a few challenges there, and actually, they're, although be it their front doors are on primary streets, vehicular access is from the back, is from the court, from the news, the rear of the site, and it's that challenge of how you again design something which is north facing but still gets some sunlight. And so these have rear back gardens which are south facing, and also um, second second floor terraces which go right the way through the house. So where you see those balconies with holes, that's actually a terrace at that level, and you can see sky through those holes. So it has to be a robust elevation, but um, but actually it still has to look like a house. So we're, we're, we're sort of working with those changes. So this, this next slide shows um, our buildings in context um, with the future landscaping of Bayswater Brook framed by the two four-story apartment buildings on either side and the, the crescent as the backdrop. And one of the apartments is affordable and one is private and they're designed so that the elevations open up towards the park and provide really great balconies on the end elevation. So each apartment acts as a balcony <coughs> into the landscape. It's really important for us to, to, to stress the whole scheme is designed to be tenure blind. So from, from the outside, all of the materials and detailing, and I think that is the best example we can give that you know you wouldn't be able to tell which is private and affordable apartment building. Um, yeah, we've got some interesting houses here. Um, this is the houses that um, face onto Primary Square. And there was always an ambition from the outline master plan that the ground floor, ground to first floor, these should be raised and that there should be a potential for perhaps some um, conversion to some commercial or office use 
rather than for those houses. And so the plan on the right shows how we've accommodated that. You can either have, as a house, it's either a large entrance hall or a study area, or that can be taken over by some commercial um, entity or, you know, somebody, I mean, a hairdresser or something. And we've got to, um, and so the whole thing is, it's almost like a shop front house onto that front square. And these are the greenway houses, which are terraced houses, and they run north-south to either side of the, the greenway. And they have parking for two cars on plot, so the large opening at the ground floor, to the right side of each house, that's where two cars can park. Um, the big window to the left is the ground floor home office or study, and um, these also have really long um, gardens to the rear and dormer, sort of a, a roof articulated with large dormer windows and um, yeah, master bedrooms or family rooms on the top floor. Uh, I think this next slide is just, um, it's really very much a work in progress and it's just showing how we're trying to um, really optimise the location and design of each house. So, for example, the bottom drawing, the bottom houses are the ones onto the linear park. But they have a great opportunity for great long west views. So how you might capture that with having a corner window. And it's again, so it's just really trying to make um, the design of each house very specific to its particular location. So we're just working with the uh, Are those detached houses? Yes, they're detached houses. And these are the waterside villas, so it's kind of key plan in the top right hand corner. You can see there to the east, northeast of the of the Greenway, and these houses overlook the, the, um, the linear park, so they have fantastic north-facing views, but are also designed to take advantage of the south orientation and um, south-facing rear gardens. So these are single-family houses. Again, they have a ground floor study overlooking the street, and um, large uh, bedrooms in, in the roof articulated to the dormer windows. next slide really just shows that it's very much work in progress. We've got you know, lots of plates to spin and lots of things to continue to develop. Certainly, you know, we've got examples of some, some of our three bed houses, uh, 165 square metres, so, you know, 1800 square foot, which is very generous for three bed houses. And you've got the balcony as a meeting space. Sounds a little bit of meeting space in each, each house? Yeah, yeah very, very much so. Yeah, I mean, that, um, the crescent one here, it's really the same, but so these guys around here, this is their back garden, but equally, we, um, we've given them some balcony and roof terrace areas so they can. Make the best of the view to the north as well. Right. So I think in its balconies, patios, terraces, and gardens, yeah. everybody has some private and space. Great. Right. <coughs> Thank you, Jeff. Um, you mentioned this the phase one is a dense one of the densest parts of the scheme. Mm -hmm. Have you calculated your density? Dwellings per hectare or whatever, whatever you want. Well, yes, I know, but overall, it's phase one. It varies from 65 to 70 dph in pockets um, to, to the lower, to lower than that, um, according to the uh, parameter plan. Um, Is it above all, would you say, an average above all below 50? I don't know whether, whether on which side of that we are at the moment. But, uh, it's not probably far that's away from that. not far away from that. Yes, that's the important thing in terms of what the city targets. Well, sure, sure, so across the scheme, it will. Okay. A number of the uh, Dwelling space in the A40 have habitable rooms on the A40 side, on the south side essentially. Um, are, and presumably they can't open their windows to the A40. They, they have only a kitchen. Uh, they, they, have have a ki they have a through kitchen living room hmm. that goes onto 
Yeah, well, that's a handle room. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, that is. And, but, it, but they obviously have an openable window on the north side. On the north side, but not on the south side. We think we're doing our noise. The point of my question is, have you identified any insufficient danger of traffic noise to need yeah, all house ventilation or anything of that sort? Yeah, I think we, 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 we took, took that decision probably about four or six weeks ago when, after we'd done our noise survey. But to take that stance, mm -hmm. we couldn't have any bedrooms along the A40 frontage. And, you know, the dual aspect living room actually gives quite you know, a great amount of light into that and the quality of space um, within that area is it, pleasant. In terms of ventilation, for them, for them units along the front, have got, um, we're introducing mechanical ventilation heat recovery units to, to deal with the ventilation, so there's no background ventilation. So some of them need or not. Final question. Um, I noticed that, oh, well, let me ask you, make it into a question. Are any of the affordable houses, I see they're on the 40 a lot of them, but are any of them overlooking the water amongst those uh, yeah, tax houses? Do you you know, any overlooking the water? Yep, very much so. Um, like you say, we're, we're on the A40 frontage, we're pretty much 50 50 in terms of affordable, private, private, affordable, private, affordable, and then overlooking uh, the linear park within the big apartment building there. That's an affordable block. That is, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, two questions. The first was about the lifetime homes and um, how many of the properties at the moment would be, say, wheelchair accessible? So and how many could accommodate a wheelchair? So somebody who moved yeah. in and then needed to use a wheelchair later in life, are, the, are, the, are all the um, living spaces able to negotiate all the, the, the door frames? I mean, it's, it's about that. So 100% of the homes are lifetime homes. 5% of the dwellings were designed to be fully wheelchair adaptable. Okay. Can I ask a question also about cycling? Yeah. You showed indicative cycling routes. Yeah. Um, and it seemed that it was sort of rather circuitous one going around, going up around the, um, the, 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 the leisure Sorry. space. Yeah. Um, I just wondered how safe the main roads would be seem to be for and so there is the, 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 the main the main street if you like and then there are all the routes also that permeate east west as well when, whether you fancy going through the park or through, along the age 40 or through the primary street there are numerous routes that connect and make sure I think, I think what we've tried to do is, is obviously we're, we're working you know, our red lines with lots of consented and um, the linear park and the primary street is, is to maximise our connectivity and coordinate with them, them schemes. Andrew, you have a question? Thanks, Roy. Yes, just uh, two quick questions. Sorry, just coming back to Mike's question about the siting of the um, affordable housing compared to the whatever the opposite is, unaffordable, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it's kind of the way it works under the, 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 the land structure, the affordable housing, and um, we're delivering on behalf of Oxford City Council. So basically, we, we transfer the freehold of the land back to them so we can't have any crisscrossing over. So, thanks. Barton one is on Saturday, so that happened at the weekend. 
and the North Bay ones are going to be distributed over the next 48 hours. So because it's next Tuesday. Could we ask the question? Could we ask questions, please? I'm, I'm sure you are. can. Shall I just? Because we actually live in North West, so we could ask questions. And then there, then there will be uh, then there's an article in the Oxford Mail as well, uh, and there are posters around the site um, advertising these, ev these events, as with the previous events, the similar methods. Did you say the site? Uh, well, there's posters at the Barton Community Centre and uh, the uh, Barton Ridge Road, for example, but project updates, mm -hmm. inviting people to come along and, uh, and discuss. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Okay, open up. Could, um, Georgina. You um, spoke about, let me just come a bit closer. Um, you spoke about um, fronting, sorting out the houses facing the A40 so that noise nuisance was reduced. But have you come over to North Way to listen to the noise? Because the noise on our green space, where our houses face, because I've got someone to record the noise, is over 90 decibels from that A40. Now, those trees were planted by Jane Cox. They were won in the competition in the late 70s, and they were planted and they've grown all those years for environmental and ecological reasons, and they've been a brilliant noise barrier. So you've done all that, but you haven't really thought about, have you come to Northway, have you heard the noise? My residents, this lady here is, can't sleep at night because of the noise. The houses fronting Foxwood Drive, because that barrier has been broken down, they're now listening to noise. So it seems to be, everything seems to be about Barton, um, when the decibel level is well above acceptable limits. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. I, mean, I mean, what, what I understand is that the, from the junction, the new junction, which leads into the spine road, up to Green Road roundabout, is now uh, under a traffic reservation order to walk to 50 miles per hour, yeah. which will actually be a significant um, reduction in noise, I think, on, on the wire front. Oh, yeah, but it still goes on 24 hours a day, uh, especially yeah. at night, you've There's got the lorry not coming along there. Yeah? What, 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 what I would say is you don't that, even um, there. You know, that, that that will be an improvement on the current situation, which is the but why was trees not down in the first place when they were a really brilliant noise barrier? There's not much difference in noise between 50 and 70 miles an hour because I've researched it. The link road from Busley into Northway has meant that there has been some uh, removal of trees. I mean, for, for Which has caused devastation and noise to the estate. Um, I'm sorry, it has to be said. I'm not looking across the table at the technical experts, but the trees are not particularly good noise barriers. Yes, they are. They are. They are. They are. They are. All the research. You uh, excuse me, boy. We've done. You've knocked all the trees. You've done five healthy trees. Who, who, who deal with it? Roy, you haven't done your research. We've done our research, and trees are a brilliant noise barrier, not and they reduce reduce night night pollution at night. But there was lots of trees because trees, you've got the central reservation yeah. two hours and on one that side. It's not a shouting yeah, match, but we know our research. I'm really sorry, you do not. You have not researched it. So we, have, we, have, we haven't got technical noise experts here tonight, but, but what we're trying to do is to obviously implement the mission and the um, order that uh, talks about the, the town green and the fact that the link road was confirmed. So, um, but I'm going to judicial review. Oh, no, this, I find probably not for tonight uh, all of yeah, those discussions. Yeah. And that's, no, but yeah, I'm going to judicial review. That and if is it's still open. Excuse me, if it's accepted because I found new information, if my town is excuse me, Roy, I'm talking. Do, do if it's know, accepted, then you will have to look for an alternative route. Yeah, but he just mentioned it. Mentioned it. Yeah, well, perhaps we'll pick it up yeah. in, when we come to speak uh, and have a conversation. You next. will have a fight on your hands trying to get through our green space. Okay, thank you. But it seems to be you're ignoring the, the noise, what is coming over to us on North Way. You know, yeah. everything, oh yes, we do over there, but nothing is being done for the noise over there. So you well, won't be able to sit in the garden in the summer. Well, what, what I'm saying to you is that that, that noise exists already. No, it doesn't, Roy. Um, not until the extent it is now. 
No, it doesn't, boy. Well, you do not live there. You come and sleep in my house for a few nights and see. It's just because you're supposed to be our councillor and you've done everything to destroy our estate and bring noise nuisance and disruption to the residents. It's disgraceful. Yeah. Are there other questions from members? <laughs> All I can say, yeah. say, Chair, is that on the question of the trees, it just it doubles up a point which a number has made for several years. Those trees that are on the A40 already, on both sides of the A40, north and south, and in the central reservation, some of them will go removed with the junction for safety reasons, obviously that's true. But the rest of them, please, can we make quite sure that neither the county council nor anybody else no, takes them out and leaves them be. Because the perception, and we've heard a lot of it tonight, the perception is, well, whatever the technicalities, the perception is if you can't see a road, it's well hidden by trees, then it helps you to yes. live with the road. Yes, that's exactly. the perception. And I think it will apply to the new houses on Barton Park just as much as it does to the existing houses. Can those yes, trees, yes. can we be quite certain the minimum number of trees are taken away? Thank you. Can I reply and say that on, on the part of the partnership, what we've asked to do, Mike, is that the bus link will be treated in terms of creating a, an L-shaped new barrier onto Foxwell Drive, oh, and that will put trees in yeah. and uh, planting to both enhance the safety of Foxwell Drive in terms of the bus link and also you know, to put trees back it was obvious you can't drive a bus link through, you know, existing trees, and you've got to create that 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 gap. But where is but, that bus link going? That, that, that will be replaced by a planting scheme which will come on um, as a planting scheme. What about there. the noise nuisance for the emergency vehicles that are going to come through Foxwell Drive and go down past Mary Clarkson's house? Because once those emergency vehicles come onto the estate. You've all, you've, they will be going past Mary Clarkson's house and Cop, Cop's Lane. We, 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 we no, but, no, you have not dealt with it. You haven't mentioned the noise nuisance from it. No, but you, you keep saying bus link, but it's not. It's emergency vehicles. It's all emergency vehicles off the A40. You're not accounting for us having traffic lights, are you? And all the traffic stopping. That that noise. Noise. Yeah. I, what, what, what I really want to do is to devote the time, we have five to the time to Barton Park. To, to the proposals here which are coming well, from the do do because it's your Barton Park. Park. What about us? Jane, is this about Please the Please discuss, here? yes. Go on, or is it about the trees? I don't, yeah. I don't think we're going to get any further. Um, if you're going to raise the trees. You have please. just said that the trees don't provide a, a, a barrier against noise. Now, I won those trees in the national competition, and pollution and noise was what I won it on. I was the only person in Oxford who won it, and I planted them. Jane, very, very much appreciate what you did in putting And since those, those trees have gone, the noise is unbearable. Someone came to my house at the weekend, and they thought that my doors were open at the back because the noise was hit back. We've got double glazing all the way back. And the noise is appalling, and people come to the house and say, what on earth has happened? Because they don't notice it. We, we, we'll have to address and the, that. And the and other thing is... We won't address it. 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 A proposal through the uh, Parks Department yeah. to put new planting around... Well, why don't you tell us this? The other thing is, not only have we lost our trees, we are going to lose our fence. Why? Are you going to bring the spoil lorries through there? And into our estate to get rid of it? No, no, no. Did you know once you break down that barrier, our children will be out onto the A40? That, I, I hope the members and the people that are building, can I just say one thing before you carry on? In 1952, when the estate was built, and there was children playing on the estate, let me speak, let me just say this, and then I will finish. In 1952, when the estate was built, Children were getting out onto the A40 through the way of a hedge. So they got onto the A40, some children were knocked down, I don't believe they were killed, and you can look at it in the minutes books of 1952. And these children were knocked down, so the Estates Committee, let me just finish, the Estates Committee decided to put up fencing, to put up fencing, and now you're taking that fencing down to risk the lives of our children. How are you going to make it safe? You can't make it safe. Yeah. Yeah.
You don't want them to hear it, that's all it is. We haven't coupled the minutes. Members, any other questions? Can a member of the public ask a question, please, Roy? Oh, right. Sorry, I didn't notice. I think he did. Uh, this is about the plans that you're showing us. You're showing us the buildings that are against the A40. They're all very large buildings. Mm. They are all going to bounce even more sound back across to the other side. We know that. It's effectively a sound wall which will bounce extra sound back. So even if you've reduced the speed to 50 miles an hour for part of that, there is going to be more noise coming across there. Is that something that you, your noise people have considered? Um, we, we can certainly ask that, that question to them. I must, I must admit, I don't, I'm not an acoustic expert, so I don't know the answer, but we we'll certainly ask. Um, I mean, our building line um, is set about 25 metres from the A40, isn't it? And that's very specific, I think, in the, in the outline consent, but we have to be a certain yeah. distance back. But and we have to make a very serious effort not to build a wall, because a yeah. wall would be the worst thing along A40, and having breaks between buildings or landscape and trees will involve a lot slightly and diffuses the, the noise. Sorry, did you say the trees were, were going to help stop the sound? Sorry, the new, <laughs> new trees. Oh, new trees. Oh, new trees. Oh, new oh, new trees. Stop yeah. sound. New and yet trees. we've just been assured that trees do not stop sound. Yeah. And we have yeah. experienced yeah. ourselves yeah. if you stand behind the, the trees, trees and less noise than if you stand above. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you just yeah. set the yeah. side of the tree? We've taken on board the issues about um, the tree cover and safety issues of the But what are you going to do once it's on board? And the City Council will. Act on those issues. What I about the safety barrier? Oh, the 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 yeah. yeah. You had a legitimate question about oh, you know, whether yeah, yeah, certain might yeah. yeah. And I think you know, we need to yeah. perhaps address that and to get some comments back as we go through the public consultation yeah. and into the planning application uh, so, itself. Yeah. Yes. Can I just make another point? Are you aware that when they cut down these very precious trees on the other side of the road? There were birds nesting there, which is so which breaks the yes, law of yes, this country. Yes, and the environment it's relevant to these guys who come it's from the company who are building it. It is yeah, relevant. I think they would want to know that birds' nests were destroyed with eggs in. Um, no, that, that's not true. Yes, they were. It is true. There are witnesses. I'm, I'm bringing the committee to a close. So, Georgina, what do you feel about this evening's meeting? I felt it was an undemocratic meeting, but um, 
okay, they're talking about plans, but it's all to do with Barton Park. They're talking about um, having lovely green space over there, having um, a water area, and you could see in the pictures that there was green space over there when we're 17.5 hectares underprovided and they're going to be taking more green space. So it's just not fair really. Okay. And also, um, also I was um, dismayed when they actually spoke about um, protecting the residents on the Barton Park from noise nuisance. Not once have they been over to look at our estate um, the, the noise nuisance is above 90 decibels now when you stand right next to it as you witnessed the other day so they didn't want to talk about that and then every time we wanted to talk about things that have effects on this development you know nobody wants to talk about Northway let's not go there because if we go there then it's going to be exposed that it's dangerous and democratic our own councillor um, who's been reporting this harebrained scheme and plotted the devastation of North Way has given no consideration to um, why the trees were planted. He's given no consideration to the feelings of the residents and he's done everything he can to go against us. And our own county councillor, who deals with issues of roads and things, is aware it's a dangerous road, but he doesn't want to answer any questions about it and just wants us to roll over and not mention it. And then obviously it's important for me to mention what are they going to put in, if they're going to take down this fence that was put up in 1952 for the safety of the children, what are they going to put in its place? Nobody wants to talk about it because they know that once it's taken down and there's traffic coming through, they can't make it safe. So I just think it's an undemocratic meeting. We're invited to go there and yet we're, they want to hush us up and they don't want us to speak.